This week, let's take a look at T-Max 100. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks. Everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity thus the gray card plus, rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you wanna go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Once again, we see Tri-X with our blue line. Here, T-Max 100 is the red line. We can see that T-Max 100 has a very immediate toe, meaning we go from no density at the low exposure to an immediate buildup of density in relation to the exposure. So Tri-X has that smoother curve. That means we are building density slower than we're exposing. T-Max on the other hand, almost immediate. Uh, so that's very good separation in the low tones. We can see here that uh, the peaks and valleys are lower, they're a little bit flatter, and that means we're getting a pretty good response through the entire tonal scale of the film. There are a couple of valleys where the tonal value is kind of flattening out just a touch in the mid and then the upper mid tones or the lower highlights, but overall it's a pretty good straight line response with a very sharp toe. So both of the, these things, it's, it's a pretty good film response. We also don't have much, if any, of a shoulder, which we can kind of expect with modern films, particularly from the major manufacturers. Shouldering 
doesn't happen very often with modern films. So, good response. Let's go ahead and look at some prints. Here we have our Tri-X 400, T-Max 100. Overall impression, it's fairly good. Nice, sharp print with good tonality. Now we can see, looking at the whites, we are not quite as fully developed as we are on the Tri-X. That's a matter of development time. While I did get full shadow exposure rated at 100, I did not get full development with the time provided for D76 from Kodak. So I would probably develop that a little bit longer if I were to do this combo regularly. When it comes to spectral sensitivity, again, we can see that Tri-X is even on the dark all the way down and even on the light all the way down. We don't have that full evenness here. Instead, yellow is a little bit lighter. Blue, just a touch darker, not as dark or pronounced as the T-Max 400. But we can also see that we are slightly lighter on the green. Now, it could be because there's yellow in the green, but uh, overall, maybe a little overly green sensitive, a little overly yellow sensitive, a little less blue. But tonality overall, not bad. Let's actually zoom in and take a look at some of the fine details. Here we can see a difference in grain. It is clearly smoother, smaller grain than Tri-X, which we would expect with a 100 speed film as opposed to a 400. Looking at the fine detail, they are nice and sharp. The grain certainly doesn't obscure any fine detail. I would say we're really getting just about the exact same shadow separation that we are with Tri-X. So if the curve shows any different, then we're not really seeing that uh, come out in the actual print. As for highlight separation, it's hard to get a good reading since this is underdeveloped a little bit, but I would say it does say separate fairly well. We can see that with the highlight along the bridge of the nose that it does show some good tonality as well as the highlights and catch lights in the eyes. Here with the close up of the shoulder, we can get a better idea of the contrast between the background and the shoulder. Good amount of detail. Uh, we can see that with kind of the fuzzy edge along the shirt. Then we got some nice detail there. Good detail in the fine hairs that I missed on my Adam's apple. And just a better shot of the grain of that smooth tone of the background. And here we can also see in the very sharp details of the collar. We have some good detail there, nice and sharp. Very fine detail being caught by that fine grain film. We do have some spots along here that is not in the film. That's just print work where I didn't put too much effort in making the prints. Uh, so I didn't make a second copy because I was making so many of them. So word to the wise, if you're making prints, don't get in a rush if you don't want white spots. Otherwise, this turned out a pretty good performance. I think you would be well served by shooting T-Max 100. It's a good, sharp film. Uh, lots of fine detail. Very fine, sharp grain. And excellent tonality. I would just develop maybe a little bit longer than recommended if you're going to do D76 like I did in this case. Otherwise, you will have fantastic results and you're limited only by your creativity. All right, thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you next time.